Well, hello again. I'm back with another video. I've got some questions about lighting, so I figured that's what we'd talk about in this video, uh, as it presents a series of unique challenges that are both baffling and difficult to deal with. Uh, but before I do that, I thought I'd show you how I actually constructed the house. So what you're looking at here is um, this Victorian house pack that was given away for free, I think in February. Uh, every month Epic Games gives away thousands of dollars worth of free content, which is amazing. And this is essentially a modular pack that contains all the elements to build these Victorian houses. You can see there, that's the kind of thing that you can build. I believe this that you're looking at over here is the um, the the actual model. And then there's also a section of, of wall models that are modular in fashion that allow you to construct stuff just by basically building Lego, which is amazing. So if we go to my project, um, I was planning on doing this anyway. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, I did this not thinking about making a video, and it turned out to be perfect to, to demonstrate exactly what I'm talking about. Each one of these pieces, you can see here, just slides in and out. Now, there is a grid snap system up here, so I can, I've can i got it set to five Unreal units. And Unreal unit is, by the way, one centimeter. So it's snapping in five centimeter increments. If I get really close, you'll be able to see it snapping. And then... When it snaps in, it connects up, and you have an essentially completed room, which is very nice. Like I said, this is going to be a little garden shed. Uh, it's made up of, this is the door blueprint. I'll get into the door blueprints in another video. But uh, other than that, it's just floor tiles and wall tiles, each which of which has a bunch of slots for materials. We'll get into materials also in another video. So if we go into the house, and let's get a light on, and then go in here. If you look along the top of the wall, and a little bit at the bottom, you'll see those bands of light. I have been trying everything I can think of to try and get rid of them, and it's apparently a, an, an in-engine problem that's been there since I think Unreal version 3. Now, I'm using Unreal Engine 5, which is the latest version. It's not the final version. It's uh, preview build 2. Uh, my logic being that by the time I get anywhere with this project, the final version will be out. And I think a lot of these problems will be solved. Uh, the way that lighting works in this game is you get static and uh, um, immovable lights, and then you get this, this new system called Lumen, where the lights are... Well, you got movable lights before, but Lumen is a whole new way of, of in-engine dealing with lights in real time, which is going to make everything a lot easier, but there are still clearly some bugs to be worked out. So the way I try to solve this is, if we go back to the little garden shed, you'll see, like I showed you, um, these walls are modular still. What I've done in this case is I've got my house design down and then I've merged everything into one module. If I go here and switch off everything above the ground floor, this window is called the outliner and it shows you all of the static meshes that you've got in the game. So if I switch off the first floor, you'll see that all disappears. Let's just switch off things like doors and windows. Um, if I push play, those things will still be there. It's just a way for me to switch them off in the editor so that I can see what I'm doing. We'll also switch off the temporary lighting on the, on the, on the second floor so that's out of the way. Um, and now, when you look at this model, you'll see that the, the inside walls, uh, the doorways, the windows, all of that stuff are essentially one model. And the reason I've done that is to try and cut down on those light leaks that show in at the corners and at the tops and bottoms of walls. Now, I can understand there being light leaks at the top because, as you can see, the, the floor, what is the, essentially the floor of the first floor and the ceiling of the ground floor is a separate mesh to what's going on here on the ground floor. So I could understand there being leakage there. But this is all one solid piece. There should not be leakage, and yet there is. Uh, 
as an example, let's go back over to this shed. Uh, I'll show you the process in which I join everything up in a second. If I open this door and go in, this should be dark, but it's not. You can see there's plenty of light getting in here at the bottom. Now, why is that? I've tried off camera, I tried joining everything up and there was still light leakage. So, if I go in really close here, you'll be able to see it. There's a gap. Sometimes the stuff just does not snap together. You'll be able to see it even better if I go to orthographic view, uh, which you do here somewhere. Uh, here it is. Uh, let's go front view. Uh, you see now I've got to switch everything else off so that you can see. Let me do that and then I'll be back. Okay, so here we are. Now all we've got up is the little shed. We're viewing it from the front. And if I zoom really close in, you'll see there's the gap. Now, there is no gap on the house. I checked, yet there's still light leakage. But this should be able to help me to illustrate what happens if I eliminate this gap. Let's go back here to our perspective view and everything has disappeared because I've got the landscape switched off and probably lighting and atmosphere as well. There we go. Uh, okay, this is another reason why in the outliner everything is, is sorted into folders as it makes it really quick and easy to switch stuff on and off. So, we'll just go to the garden shed, we'll select, let's ignore the ceiling for now, but we'll Select everything. Come on. We'll select everything on the floor. And we'll ignore the door for now. And we'll select the walls. Now, oh, let's ignore this ramp over here as well. Now, if I had to join them up now, this would still, this gap would still be there. If, however, I had to select just the walls, switch snapping off, and move this down ever so slightly. So, there's no more gap. Now again, I'm eyeballing it here. There's only so much you can do when things aren't snapping correctly. Now obviously this will introduce a gap at the top here because I did not have the ceiling selected as well, but we'll worry about that in a minute. If we go inside now, we should see that the light leakage is now happening at the top rather than the bottom. Well, there's still a bit there, but with the door open, it's hard to tell. Except that's not happened, has it? This is the thing. This is the why lighting is such a challenge to deal with in this engine. Um, so what I would do in a case like this now is I'm going to undo all of this after the video because I'm not finished working with it yet. But what we could do now is select the floor and all of the wall pieces and we go into modeling mode and merge them all into a single mesh. Now there's two there's two uh, merge functions here. There's uh, merge multiple meshes to create what did it say? The new objects, and then there's this one: self union selected meshes to resolve self intersections. Now I'm I got to be honest with you, not a hundred percent sure of what the difference is, but they if one doesn't work, I tend to try the other one, and that does work uh, as as many videos as I've watched and as many tutorials as I've done, there's always more to learn. This is an insanely complicated piece of software. Uh, so let's try the first merge and see what happens. And give it a second. Now you'll see the entire thing. If I, if I just switch snapping on again, you can see the entire thing is one solid box now. Now let's go inside and see if we can see a difference. And look at that. Pitch black, no more light leakage. 
there should be light leakage around the top, but given the fact that the sun is at essentially high noon, that could be a reason why we're not seeing light leakage around the top. Although that should be true of around the bottom as well. That's hard to tell. Oh, I'm not sure if I mentioned that, but one of the coolest things you can do with the software is just move the sun around. So if I had to do this, uh, we can just make it sunset, which I think is pretty awesome. Let's just set it back to noon. And I'm going to undo this. There we go, because like I said, I'm still working on this building. Uh, you'll see my main building has disappeared. That's because I have everything switched off here. Let's just switch it all back on. Oh, uh, come on. There we go. Um, yeah, that's about it. That's one of the issues I've been facing is dealing with these uh, um, intersections of walls and floors, trying to get rid of light leakage wherever I can. And that is about it for this video. There will be plenty more to come. Uh, I'm not going to be making videos every day, obviously, uh, but there will be a slew of new videos in the beginning as I talk about stuff that I've already done. And thereafter, videos will mainly be when I've got updates and have added something new that I think is worth talking about. So, yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.